thought for the day, brothers and sisters. Today I was reading in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 9, where basically what we have here is plagues being sent down upon the earth. Um, and in the end of the chapter, Revelation chapter 9, verses 20 and 21, the word of the Lord tells us that the people still refuse to repent and change from their wicked ways. Plagues, oftentimes in the Bible, are seen. However, today we have a misconception, I believe, as to why things happen in our life. Even pastors, I've heard them say, my own ears on TV, say that the bad things don't come from God. God is only good. God is good. But let me tell you, my friends, we need to hear from the word of God. God's word is the final authority and not people's feelings or emotions or sentiment. In Isaiah chapter 45, verse 7, we are told that calamities and disasters come from God. In the days of Noah, you remember when the flood came upon the earth and destroyed the earth. Genesis chapter 7, verse 4 tells us it is God who sent the flood, the water to destroy the earth. Exodus chapter 8 to 12, those five chapters, we have 10 plagues sent upon the people of Egypt because of the hardness of Pharaoh's heart. And each time we are told that God sent that plague. Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed by fire. We're told in Amos chapter 4, verses 11 and 12, and that fire was sent by God. Verse 12 tells us in Amos 4, to be prepared to meet your Lord. My brothers and sisters, today we have the disaster, the calamity, the plague, whatever you want to call it, of COVID-19. A few years ago here in America, we had a terrorist attack on 9-11 where many people were killed and there was a lot of folks running to church. I remember myself, we were all running to church and by God's grace, I'm still going to church and still serving the Lord. But there was a lot of people running to church because of the disaster that occurred in our day. But the repentance and the calling out to God didn't seem to last. A few years later in America, we started to pass laws through politicians where marriage was violated between a man and a woman as God ordained it. As I said, last year we had this COVID-19, uh, which has killed over 400,000 people. According to the word of God, I believe it was sent from God. And I believe God allows or permits or brings things to pass so that we would repent. As I said, in Revelation chapter 9, verses 20 and 21, the people still refuse to repent. Second, Second Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible tells us that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all people come to repentance. This is why things happen in life so God will get our attention to call us back to himself. Second Chronicles seven fourteen. we know that scripture, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways, God says he will look down from heaven and heal our land. There needs to be repentance. Brothers and sisters, repentance is so important that as I often say, John the Baptist in Matthew chapter three, verse two, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, both started their public ministries with repentance. I firmly believe that God allows things to happen in life so to get our attention and that we turn back to him. Repentance is something Christ taught us in the Gospel of Luke chapter 13, verses 1 to 5, where certain people, Galileans, were killed by Pilate, and also 12 people were killed when a tower in Siloam collapsed and killed them. Oftentimes when we see things happen, we see that, oh, those people must have been so evil and wicked. But what Christ is saying in this passage of scripture, unless we repent, we too shall perish. We need to repent and change from our wicked ways, brothers and sisters. A repentance that comes from a godly sorrow. You see, there is a worldly sorrow and then there's a godly sorrow. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 10 speaks to that. Classic illustration of godly sorrow and repentance is Peter. In Matthew chapter 26, verse 75, we are told that he wept bitterly after he denied that he knew Christ three times. Worldly sorrows, when you get caught 
and you feel bad because of the consequences you're feeling. It's all selfish. That was Judas. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 5, he betrayed Christ. And what did he do? He went out and killed himself. So let us learn that real repentance will show itself in a changed life. John the Baptist spoke of this in Matthew chapter 3, verse 8, that repentance that is godly sorrow, truly from the Lord, will produce fruit. It'll be evident in a person's life. My friends, I grieve over what's going on in our nation today. Coronavirus is real. Me and my wife and my kids, we all had it last year. And thank God we were all recovered. And many are suffering and dying from it, over 400,000 people. And yet, because the nation of America, which I firmly still believe is refusing to repent, you see, we are now trying to push more sexually immoral laws where we are allowing men who want to be women to play in women's sports. I, 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 it grieves my heart. It really grieves my heart that we have become so proud. And it's sad because the problem is in the church. You know, I, you often hear me say this. The problem is not in the courthouse or the White House or the U.S. Capitol. That's the world. The world is the world. And the world, as 1 John 5, 19 tells us, is under the sway of the devil. The problem is in the church. Judgment begins, as 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17 tells us, in the house of God. Why? Because we're more accountable. We're more responsible. Christ told us in Luke chapter 12, verses 47 and 48, to him much is given, much is required. It is our responsibility to live out a life of repentance as we see these plagues affecting the earth and it's going to get worse and worse before the Lord comes back. I would like to end with this. As I said before in Amos chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible says, be prepared to meet your God. Unless the Lord wraps us his church, we are all going to die and have an appointed day to meet the Lord. Approximately every day, three people die every second on the earth an average of 180,000 people every day. It could be me and it could be you. Are we prepared to meet our Lord and escape the eternal plague that we will have to face in hell for our sins? And the only way we could do that is through Jesus Christ and him alone, coming to him as Lord and Savior. For as Acts 4, chapter 4, verse 12 tells us, there is no other name under heaven by which we must be saved, and that is Jesus Christ. God bless you all this day. Stay strong in the Lord and the power of his might.